Hey folks, David Creative Craft House to show you another one of our math magic puzzles. Uh, this happens to be a real favorite. This is one of our, our designs and um, usually when I get these new designs I try them out with uh, you know friends and neighbors and uh, this one um, has proven to be a lot of fun so I hope you have some fun with it too. Uh, what I've got here uh, is five candles and Maybe hard to see on here, but we we've, we've laser etched these. They're nicely burned. Uh, thick wood. This is quarter inch wood. We may vary the wood a bit. This is alder, uh, but the wood is very strong. These are very not going to break. Um, and you'll notice that they are printed on both sides. Each candle is printed on both sides. And we also have this little stand here. Uh, and in this stand, it is uh, possible to uh, to um, insert these little candles that just go right in that little slot there very easily and um, it's maybe hard to see here but they'll stand up quite nicely uh, like so. I'm going to lie them down just for purposes so that you can see them a little better but you understand um, it's probably a better presentation if you do this trick on somebody to put them in the stand. Now here's here's the deal on this. Uh, you ask, you tell someone that you are just a whiz at, at doing uh, mathematics, uh, what appears to be extremely difficult mathematics, by the way. Uh, have them pick um, any number of candles, um, two or more. The more they pick, the hotter it's going to be, um, the math's going to be, because they're going to pick candles and they can insert them in any order that they want. And by the way, the numbers in the candles are all different. Uh, any order that they want um, in the stand, here and let's just light them out for now. Uh, they can flip them in any order. They can flip them over the other side if they want uh, and end up with, uh, let's say they chose all the candles and you would have something looking like that. Now what you've got here, you read across, are uh, five very large numbers. For example, reading across I have 16,386 on the second row I have 35,641, on the third row 82,000, and, and so forth. I have very five, five very large numbers. Uh, you will be able to virtually instantly uh, tell them what the sum of these five numbers equals, no matter how they arrange it. Um, I've also um, figured out a way that you can just look by looking at the back side, if these are standing up, you could just look at the back side, not even see the numbers that are exposed on the front side, and still be able to determine what the sum of those numbers are. Pretty good effect, huh? And it doesn't matter if they take uh, 5 or 4 or 3 or 2. I guess you wouldn't want to take 1. That would be very easy. But you could do that also instantly. All right. Um, and let me uh, tell you how this is done. If you don't want to know, a good time to turn away from the video. Okay. Now I will explain to you how this trick is done and why it works. Uh, you will notice that on any one candle, if I disregard the the second row, the, in this case the three, that every every column, every number will add to twenty. For example, 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus 7 is 20. Looking at this candle, I'll disregard the second row. And 9 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2 is 20, and so forth. 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 is 20. Well, what does that mean? That means that, well, I have got uh, 20 groups of 1, 20 groups of 10, 20 groups of 100, 20 groups of 1,000, and 20 groups of uh, 10,000 in this particular example here. And if you add all those 20 groups, you get something that looks like this. 20 groups of 10,000 is 200,000. 20 groups of 1,000 is 20,000, and so forth. And that sum will always equal 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And the last digit will always be 0. Regardless of how many candles are picked, uh, we'll just lop off a, you know, the front end. But it will always be 2, 2, 2, followed by a zero. What does that mean? Well, to find the sum of all these vast numbers, all I need to do is look at the second row. Second row only. And I will add 3 to the 2. I'll add 2 to the 2. I'll add 5 to the 2. In this particular example, now remember there's always this adds to 20, so there's always one that carries over. And your first number will always be 2 
in the sum that you obtain. So in this case, the answer would be 254,767. The last digit stays the same. Do you see? Um, if I turn these, if I swap these around a little bit, here's a new example. I've got five completely different numbers uh, to be added, but the result is going to be, in this case, you notice that the second row is 76545. The result is going to be 298,765. I added two to each of these. I start with a two, I added two to each of these, and I end with the last digit there with to five. Isn't that cool? And one thing I've done uh, to this is I have made it such that on the back side, the uh, second on the second row, the two numbers always add to eight. So you'll notice if there's a seven here, the other side is going to be a one. If there's a six here, you got it, the other side is going to be a two. Okay. If there's a 5, the other side's going to be a 3, a 4, the other side a 4, and so forth. Such that you could set these up uh, in, the, in the stand where you don't even see the front of the numbers. You don't even see the numbers adding, that he's adding. But you can tell what those numbers are by looking at the back side. You'll first have to get the difference between the number you see and 8, and that will be the number shown on the other side, and, and then make your calculation to get the, um, the total sum. It's a very cool trick. Um, yeah, I think it can be quite, uh, quite a lot of fun, um, and uh, a few people will be able to figure out just how you are able to accomplish this so quickly and so easily. All right, thanks. This is David, Creative Craft House. Uh, check out all our other uh, great math magic puzzles and other puzzles on our website. Thank you.